okay welcome to video on solutions to lmrf test one so this is second part of course uh, in the previous video we were discussing write an expression for the maximum and minimum voltage of capacitor used in a stable multivert circuit does it vary with charging and discharging time constant of the capacitor it was a question and we know that uh, the capacitor voltage in a stable multivert uh, will vary depending on uh, the output voltage if the output voltage is uh, plus vsat the capacitor voltage will charge up to beta vsat if it is minus vsat it will go up to minus beta vsat so capacitor maximum voltage is plus beta vsat and capacitor minimum voltage is minus beta vsat where beta is given by r1 divided by r1 plus r2 this r1 and r2 are as per the normal uh, circuit connections and it was said that uh, does it vary with the charging and discharging time constant now this vc max and vc min will not vary with uh, the time constant tau which is the value of r into c uh, vc max and vc min will only depend on the value of beta and uh, the saturation voltages uh, next question is design and write the stable multivert circuit to generate a waveform with the t on is equal to tf is equal to 1 millisecond assume that plus or minus is at s plus or minus 12 volt this is a circuit diagram of a stable multivert using op amp because this is coming under op amp uh, category so we have uh, rt ct and this is r1 uh, r2 as a feedback network uh, assuming r1 to be equal to r2 and is equal to 100 kilo ohm and the specification given is t on is equal to tf is equal to 1.1 millisecond this is a uh, given value that is plus or minus uh, v sat is equal to plus or minus uh, 12 volts beta is nothing but r1 divided by r1 plus r2 so from the values r1 r2 is equal to 10k the beta value comes out to be 0 0.5 uh, for this particular circuit diagram and the on time happens to be rt ct into ln of 1 plus beta divided by 1 minus beta which is uh, same as uh, the t of so since t on is equal to t of is equal to 1 millisecond and beta is equal to 0 0.5 assuming the value of c t to be 0 0.1 microfarad that timing resistance becomes 9.1 kilo ohms uh, the next question is write the circuit diagram to rectify uh, an input voltage of 0 0.4 sin 1000 t when the input voltage is less than 0 with a slope of uh, minus 10 since the slope is minus 10 uh, this is you can see this is a reducing uh, output voltage now this slope is minus 10 now now since the input amplitude is only 0.4 we have to look for a uh, precision rectifier so this precision rectifier when the input voltage is uh, negative here you can see the input voltage is negative when the input voltage is negative the output voltage will be uh, positive here initially when it is positive this d2 opens and the d1 conducts when d1 conducts this uh, 10r uh, and r it, it is now act like a inverting amplifier so inverting amplifier with a gain of uh, minus 10 so when the input voltage is uh, negative we will actually get a positive voltage now we will get a slope of minus 10 so this is a circuit diagram and these are transfer characteristics for this particular question and uh, coming to the phase lock loop uh, part if the loop filter time constant is more how it will affect the working of PLL tau which is the uh, time constant of the loop filter suppose if it is uh, more suppose if the time constant tau is more this will reduce the capture range but it will increase the rejection capability of PLL meaning if the time constant is more so it will actually reduce the uh, capacity of the uh, capture range of this PLL but it will certainly increase the rejection capability of PLL it will reject uh, the nearby frequencies which are far, which are away from the capture frequency which are away from the capture range next uh, is if the difference next question is if the difference in the input and the VCO frequency is too much why it is not possible to track the input signal now we know that uh, the difference in the input and vco frequency because these two are the signals which will be fed to the phase detector if uh, wi which are omega i happens to be the input uh, angular frequency and omega naught happens to be the vco frequency if these two are uh, too far then the output of the phase detector that is omega i 
difference of omega naught will be away from the band edge of the loop filter. So even the difference of these two will be away from the band edge of the loop filter. So it is away from the loop filter band width, a band edge, so that it will not give an output voltage. So VCO cannot track the input signal. So only when the difference of uh, omega i and omega naught falls within the loop filter band edge, then only the VCO can track the input signal. Since the difference is falling away from the band edge, it's unable to track. Of course, uh, we are not talking about the addition because addition is always away from that band edge. So we are looking for the difference. Next question is, if the free running frequency of the PLU is 100 kilohertz and F capture is plus or minus 10 kilohertz and F lock is plus or minus 30 kilohertz, suggest the frequency range of uh, input so that PLL can capture it. Determine maximum minimum frequency of the input so that PLL can is used to lock the input signal. Since the uh, frequency is free ending frequency is given as uh, 100 kilohertz and capture range is plus or minus 10 kilohertz, so since it is plus or minus 10 kilohertz, it is uh, plus or minus of this uh, 100. So if the input frequency is falling within 90 kilohertz and 110 kilohertz, it can certainly capture the signal. And uh, we have been asked to find what is the minimum and maximum uh, frequency so that PL can lock. So as it is given here, the lock frequency is plus or minus of 30 kilohertz around 100 kilohertz. If the frequency is above 70 kilohertz and less than 130 kilohertz, it can easily uh, the PLL can lock the signal. So maximum frequency is 130 kilohertz and medium frequency is 70 kilohertz is the lock ring frequency. So whenever plus or minus is given, it is around F naught. Here it is around F naught. The 10 kilohertz is 90, 110. Around 10, around 100 kilohertz plus or minus 30 happens to be 70 and 130 kilohertz. Next is conceptually discuss how the PLL is used to demodulate the FM signal. So we know that uh, uh, this is the PLL block diagram. We have a phase detector, we have loop filter, there is a VCO, and we have the FM input. So whenever we have a FM input, we're going to have carrier frequency and we're going to have uh, the maximum frequency and minimum, minimum carrier frequency. So the, this, these are uh, the specifications of a FM signal. This FC max and FC min purely depends on the modulation index of the FM signal. Now error voltage that is generated here will be proportional to M of T. So this FC max and FC min should be well within the lock range of uh, that PLL. So this is what we are having. So one of the requirement is the carrier frequency of the FM should be equal to the uh, free ending frequency of the VCO. So that's what we are written here. And uh, this is FC min and FC max should be well within the F lock, uh, F lock lower and F lock higher. So if the maximum deviation or the deviation in the carrier frequency is well within the lock range of PLL, it can easily capture. A low pass filter is used at used for the error voltage uh, which will suppress the ripple in the demodulated waveform. So after you have uh, this error voltage which is proportional to M of T, you can certainly put one more low pass filter so that you can able to get a, a ripple free demodulated waveform. So this, was, this suppresses the ripple in the demodulated waveform. And uh, here uh, this is the question corresponding to uh, DAC. Uh, do you think Arduino has a DAC? How to get an analog output voltage from an Arduino board. So there is no direct analog output uh, pin. That is, we won't get a constant DC voltage of the desired value from zero to VCC uh, in a Arduino board. Instead, we get an effective required value of DC voltage in the form of PWM output. We will not be getting a constant DC voltage of one volt, two volt, or five volt. What we'll get is we'll get an effective voltage of uh, one volt, two volt, or five volt in the form of a PWM waveform. Meaning, if you want to have a more DC voltage, you can see uh, the PWM width here, the width is more, the on time is more, off time is less. If the on time is more, we're going to have effectively uh, the DC voltage is large. Suppose if you want to have a less DC voltage, you can see uh, this is on time is very small, the off time is large. So here we're going to get the least or uh, lesser DC voltage. So this way, if you want to have more voltage, you have to have the width as more, if you want to have lesser and lesser voltage, keep on reducing the width of the output waveform. We are going to get an effective DC voltage of reduced value, but it will not be a constant one. 
next question was so we have been asked to uh, identify this uh, this was actually a question mark suppose upon adding all the bits uh, till this point till 1 1 so we are going to get this as a uh, 0.5 lsv so we are writing this as you can see inl is equal to 0 we are writing it as 0 here and uh, for 0 1 for 0 1 the inl is 1 lsv so this is a desired value but the actual value is 1 lsv above and for 10 it is half lsb down so this was the expected value but it is minus half lsb and for 11 input combination the output was supposed to be here but it is half lsb above we are writing it half lsb so it is very important that we need to write what is on x axis it is 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 on y axis we have to write this is 0 volt this is 1 by 4 2 by 4 3 by 4 so these are the uh, four levels of uh, this uh, we are written 4 by 4 uh, to accommodate this plus half lsp uh, most of you are not written uh, the y axis and uh, some of you are not written properly the y axis and uh, some of you have forgot to write the x axis variables next uh, what are the disadvantages of weighted r dac uh, write the circuit diagram of a 4 bit uh, r to r dac and estimate the output voltage if B1, B2, B3 is uh, these two combinations. Okay, uh, major two disadvantages of uh, a weighted R is as you are increasing the values of uh, the number of bits, the resistor value, resistor value required for the LSB happens to be exponentially very large, which is uh, very difficult to realize. And uh, if the switch resistance is more, it will going to uh, affect the output voltage uh, badly. So especially it will going to affect more when uh, we have the LSB, sorry, the MSB contribution uh, of the switch will be more, the switch resistance is more. Now this is a circuit diagram of a 4-bit DAC here. So we have 4-bit B1, B2, B3, B4. So this is a voltage mode uh, DAC. Uh, we have been asked to find the output voltage for uh, two different combinations. It is 1 triple 0 and 1 0 1 1. For 1 triple zero so of course we have the output expression as v naught is equal to k into v reference into this is the general expression for uh, a DAC for 4 bit we are restricting it to 4 bits for a combination of 100 zero zero, so we have the gain k is equal to 2 here as you can see here this is rf and uh, since it's an annuating amplifier it is 1 plus rf by r1 we are assumed rf is equal to r1 which happens to be a uh, gain of 2 and v reference given is 4 volts if I am not correct, okay, V reference is uh, given as 4 volts. Now you can see it is 2 into 4 and uh, only uh, this is B1 is 1, so others are 0. We end up with V naught as 4 volts. Similarly, for this combination of 1, 0, 1, 1, we are writing it as uh, this is 1 by 2 plus 0, 1 by 8 plus 1 by 16. This happens to be 11 by 16 times uh, 2 into 4 because 2 is the gain, 4 is the reference voltage. This happens to be 5.5 volts. Uh, this is uh, the solution of LMRF. I hope uh, all of you understood uh, how to answer all the questions. Now it, it is not too far away from okay, what we have discussed in the class or in the videos. You have to understand the question and then write it accordingly. I hope uh, all of you will do uh, in the coming, coming uh, whatever quiz assignment or the activities you are going to do. Well,